One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video, guys. All righty, yeah. So today, um, I want to talk about some trading, and this is the one that I had. I, I wanted to do. Like, I actually wanted to do this one. Like, at least, at least four, four or five weeks ago. But like, one kept getting in the way, and like, I was gonna do this one last week, and then like, you know, kind of like the market kind of changed a little bit, and like, we we got those runners back, and I was like, okay, it's kind of probably pertinent to do this one. But this one is the one I wanted to do last week because it, it, it was probably a very common if like some of you guys are falling into slumps, like especially in that slow, shitty September where it's literally just really hard to get any kind of trade on, um, any kind of good trade on, and it's easy to make mistakes. So I really wanted to, I, I felt like a lot of people were probably approaching or in this kind of slump mentality of trading. And if not, you guys have all been there before and maybe some, maybe some of you are in there now. I'm sure like, you know, it's probably a pretty good bet if I, if I pick a topic on slump trading and it'll apply to at least some of you guys. Really help understand this one is the Bad Habits webinar and the Emotions webinar. Uh, thanks, thanks Kilo, always coming in clutch. Yeah, these two, Controlling Emotions and How to Fix Bad Habits, these should definitely help um, uh, in preparation for this webinar. Um, and this is a Q&A webinar, which means um, if at any time, go ahead, feel free to ask a question um, if it's pertinent to what I'm talking about, I'll try to answer it as I'm talking. If not, I'll try to finish what I'm talking about and then get to the question and fear not if, um, you can just keep reposting the questions. No one will get mad and, and it'll help me cause I, I glance over sometimes I miss them, but at the end we'll have a, a, a portion for Q and a time if there's any questions that I missed. So without further ado, uh, yep. Yeah, time to, time to start. The fire still burns. We're still on a longs market. I do think that what I said last week continues. It's still not that strong of a, not that strong of a, of a buyer's market. It's a, it's a buyer's market, but it's a weaker buyer's market. We've def definitely had a lot crazier buyer's market where stocks just continue to run all day or stocks just go extreme or the sympathy runners don't just die off. And it's a huge sector move. The problem with this one, I think, is that the, the main runner was uh, SBI and that was kind of like an energy company. And that's why I was really kind of hoping that um, the car sector would go again because I think it was like SPI ran on like an energy deal with, uh, you know, like, like cars, I believe. Right. And that's why originally I thought it was going to be like FUV and those, those, those car stocks that were going to kind of be the sector that ran again. I was kind of hoping that because energy is a really played out sector. It's like a macro sector, which means it's going to come and it's going to go, but it's never going to be super strong. It's kind of like China. It, there, there's going to be spurts of China sector and there's going to be spurts of energy sector. It's too macro of a sector to be super like everyone super like excited and hype like like the shippers were at one time or like like Bitcoin was like it's not that that niche of a of a sector like energy. It's going to come. It's going to go. It's always going to have a, a long lasting. Uh, it's going to be like a long lasting forever sector that kind of gets hot and not. But it's never going to be that one that that super, super like that sector that goes on for weeks and weeks. Like we've all gotten caught in like news, news spikes. And that really sucks. Like, you know, if you're not expecting news to come out and like, you're kind of, kind of just up here and you might have a line, you know, you might have a line at like 250, right? Like a fantasy order out and the news comes out and gets you that happens. And that's, that's, you know, like, that's just bad luck. I'm just, you know, that's just bad luck. Um, you do have to be aware, like, the, you know, you can't ever, you can't blame anything on the stock market. Like you always like, if you have an order out, you need to be ready to cut it. If, if something like this happens, like these are all lessons that we learn, you know, like you, you, we all learn this lesson. Like you, you know, like if you have orders out, be watching them, you know, like be careful, like you could get PR. It's, it, it's unlucky, but it, I mean, it's part of the game and you kind of learn to be a little bit more careful with it. It's just, it's a bump in the road that you have to go through. But here, this is essentially a simple short. This kind of stuff, this was a nice stuff here, right? This 240 stuff. Like if I was short, I would have cut it here. Like if I was short, I would have, I, I probably would have cut it here because this looked like it was going to break 250. So like when this happened, like I kind of just waited for that stuff to happen. And normally like I'll wait for the stuff and then short the pop. I waited, like I waited for the stuff and the price was good enough. The price was good enough for me to just take it there. So I did. We were, I was already at a good price. I liked the risk to reward and I liked the probability after that cover stuff. And I remember I was, I was on the phone with my tab on this one. And I was like, like, I think we both took this short. 
um, he covered, he, uh, I, he was of course more patient than me, but so is everybody. Uh, like he, I think, I think he eventually got sub two covers, but I remember saying something like, I remember saying that, um, um, out loud, I remember saying like, I'm covering this VWAP poll and I'm like, and I'm out, I'm covering the VWAP poll and I'm out. And we'll go over how important that is to do for yourself. Like, especially when you're getting your footing in trading, um, like you'll learn how important this is, but like, I remember when this happens, like, Hey, I'm shorting here right at the high. I know I'm on the front side. I even said out loud, I'm covering the pull the view up. That's what I'm doing. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at my investing club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. And so I tried, you know, a again, a chat room fucking ruined this shit for me. I know, I, I know if I can a chat room ruin this shit for me. Like I, I saw this, like the second, like I bought here over this high, the, the reason why I got in the sell is like, like this was a sad face trade. Like after this, I was like kind of, you know what I mean? Like I was pretty upset. Not upset, but like just bummed, right? Like I'm always bummed when I take a view up break trade that doesn't work. But like, I mean, I mean this one, I'm bummed because this one had potential, right? Like you're looking at this, it, it breaks 950, it's pretty thin. You see 10 in pre-market high kind of right there. Those are some solid dominoes, guys. Like a $10 whole level pre-market high, breaking over high a day. You know, you're long, you're in the green. I mean, it feels good. And you got a solid reward set, right? That's what I saw on the reward side, right? And then the second it kind of stalled at like 975, I was like, oh, really? It couldn't even get to 10. And that's kind of when that's kind of when reality sets in. And you can't be stubborn about that kind of thing, right? Like, and, and I'm like, I'm not. I've been I learned the hard way about being stubborn with that. Oh, well, let me just wait and see. This kind of setup, this kind of entry, you can't possibly have the patience. And Harry talked about that today, right? Like, like Harry and I kind of trade differently. I'm I I like I, he'll get a lot better entries than me. Um but I'll get more of that kind of, I'm going to say like, like efficient, like if it's going to work, it's going to work right now kind of entry, but I always have a higher entry, right? Like I, like I, I, I don't, I don't do that dip buy very much. I'm much more of a strength buyer. S and so yeah, S S S L D B uh, today. I mean, I got, I basically got the dip and rip. Um, the, I actually shorted this one too. Like you see, like I, I got a quick short and a quick cover. I lost like five cents there. But like, um, I mean, this was a dip and rip set, right? It just kind of dipped, consolidated. This crack of five, I thought it was over. So I, I put a quick short on. It held and trapped and I knew, right? Like that, that's, that's the moment. And so like, I actually tried to buy 510 and it fucking skipped on me. So I was like, 520, shit. And so I'm like, I'm buying here. Like I, I, I'm, I'm happy with basically anything below 540 at this point. Like, cause now I, I feel comfortable risking this five after this kind of stuff and hold right here. So I'm basically just trying to get filled up here and, like I buy up here and, and like I, I even buy a third one at 560. That's probably getting a little bit aggressive, but I was really going for that squeeze move on over 580. And so I, I ended up, sell, I ended up selling like half kind of right away, just in kind of in, in defense, just in case it wanted to stuff. And then like it kind of held for, for, for a second or two, I put it back on and I added more. I'm really going for that high day break and I get really bummed, but it was half expected. Um, that it kind of held six. And I talked about that before. Like we're going to see if the supply comes in with, with six, um, we're uh, not with six, but we're going to see if the uh, supply comes in on this larger float because it does have a like, larger than average. It had like a 15 to 25. I don't know which, exactly which one was right, but it was around there. That's kind of how it was trading. Um, that's a slightly larger than average small cap runner float, which means it's going to need significantly more volume in order to hold it, right? Because that's a lot more capital, right? To, to hold the percentage gain. How do you get this up and what are you doing wrong, right? So it, in essence, I, I said this before and I'll say it again, trading is very streaky in nature, right? Just as it, as it is on its face, trading is very streaky. It's very common to be doing really well, have a few misses, a few dings along the way. And then all of a sudden you can't place a green trade to save your entire life. Right. It, like it's very common to do that, to go from being, to go from doing so well to just like, what in the fuck happened? Right. Like, like literally, like I can't, like, it doesn't matter what I do. Like the second I hit this button, loss, loss, loss. Like it doesn't even matter at all. Like you just keep fucking losing. Like, 
it's like you almost feel like the market's fucking against you. It's just like, why am I even going to play? Like, here, like, 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 I even had jokes with my tabs about like, um, like, oh, here, don't worry. Like, like, are you short? Let me help you. Let me just buy it. Right. Like, you know, you just kind of get that jokes, you know, that, that funny and like that, that's a skill to be able to laugh about stuff like that. That kind of helps keep your mind on track. You have to just ask yourself this secondary question. If you would take the trades again, here's your last ace in the hole. If you would take the trade again, you really have to make sure like, like double check it with your setup book and be like, we're, we're all the ducks in line. Right. And this is this next thing, right? If you can say you would take the trade again, make sure you didn't miss one thing, right? Make sure that like, and you probably did. Um, determine if there was something wrong with the trade. You know, maybe you overlooked the float. Like if you bought, if you bought, if you bought um, S SLDB today and you're like, oh, Yo, I forgot this one had like a 20 million share float. It wasn't the, the 3 million low float. Or, of course this one stuffed and didn't run, right? Or like it's, you know, you know, we're in a seller's market. Of course that one stuffed or I longed it, but dude, there were no borrows. I forgot there were no borrows, right? Hopefully that kind of stuff. And if you can find, basically if you can find stuff wrong with your trading, um, you can kind of pull yourself out of that slump, right? You can pull yourself out of that slump um, before you fall deeper. Uh, take breaks either, either in the middle of the day, like, you know, just like take leave right take a day off or, or two if you need right like it's always better to take a day off on like friday and monday and come back tuesday that's a solid that's a solid like if, if you're if you're feeling stressed take friday off and take monday off and then you can kind of have like a four day week and you're only missing two days right you're only missing two days of trading so that, that's just a strategic time to take take the breaks um you know take a day off or two um it's better than forcing um, coming back and seeing that you missed a setup, that's going to happen if you take days off. But it's still way better than delving yourself deeper down the hole where you were probably have fucked up the trade anyway. Like, let's just be honest. You know, like when you're in that unhealthy, when you're verging on, when you're verging on that slump, sometimes just taking the break and just taking the day off really just like resets it. And like, just, you know, you, you look at the trade and you, and you look at the trade that you, that you, that you miss and you're going to say, Oh, like, Look, I missed a setup because all I had to do was that. And you're, sometimes it can even help when you see a trade you missed. I, I, you, you started off really good, like with the with the covers early. You just, I think you need to continue that a little bit. But nice back here, right? Yeah, backside so much easier, right? Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, and like I mean, the the rule of staying, you know, kind of, you know, this was kind of like over VWAP reclaiming kind of stuff. These aren't, these shouldn't be huge size trades really up here. Th these can't be big size, right? These can't be ouch that hurt my account kind of size trades that, that, that should be, that should be the rule that saves you. So even if that kind of, even if something like this happens, it's not so bad. Whereas these ones and these ones can be bigger because you have less risk. These ones like can't be ouch that hurt size whiskey withdrawal. Yeah, and see, yeah, that's what I talk about. Like, if you're only small size, that's no excuse for not cutting, right? That being in small and having room to add is, you don't have to add to them, right? I'm gonna cut the stream off just to make sure that it saves the recording. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you wanna see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.